most of philanthropy involved with journalism is strategic philanthropy. It's specific foundations or funds or people who are focused on trying to solve for a problem or create more investigative reporters. Retail philanthropy is totally blind to journalism. And so the, the problem is, I would say, well, I could make a gift to you, Megan, or I could make a gift to you know, a human services nonprofit, that seems like it would be more important. So I think to both of your points, the ability to have the general constituency of the community recognize that when they make a gift to a nonprofit journalism uh, space, they're actually investing in their own community. Um, but I think part of it is because the, the the gap hasn't been made, hasn't been crossed there as far as, you know, what is the role of a philanthropic foundation in supporting journalism? What does that look like? What's the need? Um, and 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 where 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 do we fit in? And how is this similar and different to supporting an arts organization or um, a human service organization? I, I think it's gotten better over the last couple of years of philanthropy and foundations really thinking about Okay, so who's the end user of this thing that we're creating? It's, you know, encouraging to see people moving in that direction. And, and I just hope that it keeps moving in that direction. I've noticed um, just in the last five years, um, foundations and um, wealthy philanthropists have sprung up to create um, journalism funds. Um, uh, Seattle Times uh, has probably been the leader in this in the last dozen years. They've started um, what they call news labs, like they have a news lab to fund education, another one to fund um, traffic, another one to fund investigative reporting. I mean, the, all these uh, foundations across the country are springing up to fill the gap between the dwindling of the dwindling resources of of uh, of news media to uh, make sure that there is more focus in the areas that they care about, uh, and that is just it's blossomed. I'd love for Center Florida to, to do that. The most important issue to address when you're talking about philanthropy and journalism is that a lot of publishers are creating products that are like a social service. When you're listening to your audience, you're responding to their needs. And I think we saw big movement towards that after the pandemic. People really needed local information like never before and it wasn't there. So we saw a lot of publishers um, start up during that time, but also publishers that were willing to respond to local needs. And so whenever you look at it like a social service, it needs philanthropic support because local information should be a right. It shouldn't be a privilege. I definitely see it firsthand how philanthropy goes hand in hand with helping create, foster, mold, uh, you know, journalists, solid journalists. For people who don't know what the firewall is, it means money doesn't influence editorial. And, you know, I've had those conversations with donors where, you know, they might be used to giving to an organization where they have more influence over the programming. And the conversation that we have is about the fact that what you are investing in here is independent, trustworthy journalism. And that is a public good. A couple of years ago, as we joined the Trust Project, you know, they set the standards for, for our wall and for our levels of transparency. I want to build on that from a hyper-local point of view as well, because you have a very small staff that's a little harder to do. You have limited, you know, capacity. So you do have to have, like you said, that firewall, it has <laughs> to be written down. It has to be extremely clear and just transparency, transparency, transparency.